Hey, how you guys doing today? It is the Ungodly Geeks coming at you with dumb shit. I'm hey, Joe. I'm Luke. And today, like I said, dumb shit. Um, That's all there ever is is dumb shit anymore. I mean, pretty much. Like we we've kind of evolved into this uh, society where we are constantly being fed dumb shit. Um, like this one, for example, a man who advocated caning for adultery gets caned for adultery. Where did that happen at? That's um, what I love. I believe it happened is Indonesia. An oh, Indonesian okay. man has been publicly flogged for adultery under draconian law he helped create. <laughs> um, Lewis, a member of the uh, Asa Olima Council in the deeply conservative Asa province of Indonesia, relieved, received 28 lashes in front of a crowd on Thursday after being caught having an affair with a married woman. Like many Indonesians, this douchebag goes by a single name. His agency advises the local government on drafting and implementing religious laws. A video by the AFP news agency shows him grimacing as each strike is delivered onto his back by a masked officer on stage in front of a handful of onlookers, some who filmed on their cell phones. The woman with whom he was caught also received a series of lashes. Jesus. Like, I don't want... I, I don't think caning is an appropriate punishment for anything, and having adultery being illegal and holding a punishment of caning is all draconian, like they said, yeah. but I can't not laugh at that. Yeah, I know. Uh, AC, the country's only region to impose Shaira law, uses caning to punish a series of offenses such as homosexuality, drinking alcohol, and having sex outside of marriage. Jesus. Wow. Like, just Sharia wow. law. It's yeah. just a fucking religion. It's a problem. Religion of peace. Yes. Um, we have clarified his identity and we have proceeded with the investigation and handed over the dossier to prosecutors. And today we carried out the implementation of the flogging punishment. AFP reported Muhammad, uh, <clears throat> the bandit AC sheriff, sheriff police chief, as telling reporters at the caning. A lot of things we can learn, but ultimately we have to enforce God's laws, especially in the Islamic land like here. What I love is the whole, uh, we completed our investigation, uh, you know, we, it, it's something like that, like they, you know, use video surveillance, blah, 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 right, yeah, the like investigation, and then we handed out the punishment of hitting them with sticks, yep. or throwing rocks at them until they died. Like, yep. it's like you're it, almost, and then, uh, God. Yeah, like you're, you're, you're almost... almost at the uh, like level of civilized world, and then you're you're beating a guy with a stick, for... and then you're beating them with sticks, yeah. because or cutting off a hand or some other ridiculous shit they would do in some right, fucking yeah. backwards ass. God, I, wow! I just I don't get it, man. Like, eh, I mean, it's it's the fucking world. Um, here's another one mm-hmm. that I I and we 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 giggled at this. We found this one amazing. A man stole an electric shopping cart from Walmart and drove it from one bar to another to avoid a DWI. God, say. I love that. Yeah, I um, think you still can get a DWI because I mean, you're, you're, you're you're driving. It's not it's not a, like a road vehicle, but you're still driving something, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that would work, but uh, Louisiana man was arrested for stealing an electric power shopping cart from Walmart to avoid DWI. Bryce Kendall Williams, 32, was charged with a felony unauthorized use of a movable after driving the motorized shopping cart over half a mile away from one bar to another, according to. <laughs> The Terrebonne <laughs> Parish Sheriff's Office. He was shy. Oh, getting from one bar to another. His bond was set at $2,500, police said in a statement. A deputy with the Sheriff's Office responded to a bar in, well, uh, I don't know how to spell it, how to pronounce this, Hawama, Louisiana, around 12.30 a.m. Sunday after receiving a complaint by someone arriving to a bar in a shopping cart, according to the statement. The town is about 60 miles Fucking southwest snitch. of New Orleans. <laughs> When the deputy arrived, he found the shopping cart parked between two cars in the bar's parking lot. Yes. Williams told the responding deputy that he was at a different bar and thought that if he drove his car, he could get charged with a DWI, the sheriff's office said. Instead, Williams opted to steal the electric shopping cart, which is meant for disabled people, and drive it to a different bar. Oh, God. We have no idea if this guy has a lawyer or not, but this whole idea I is want him hilarious. To, like, I would, I'm hoping he'd be like, I was going to return it. <laughs> Like, That's I, so like, good. Yeah. He's just honest. He's like, oh, I didn't want to drive, officer. <laughs> I got a DUI that way. All right. So this actually happened. The next story here actually happened. Oh, hold happened. on. Something that's interesting with that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Two nights ago, the store we work at, Walmart, uh, a shopping cart and an electric cart were stolen from our store. Someone put them in the back of the car and got caught about a half a mile down the road by the police. <laughs> so this shit totally happens everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's definitely not, like, contained. Oh, like, no. People I re- do the dumb shit everywhere. I remember one night getting a call from a customer <laughs> because they saw a 
like two or three kids in one of our electric carts riding it down the, the three of them actually the three yeah yeah and they drove riding them it down, down the street they, they got, drove them down to a church that's around a mile and a half or so down the road yeah. from from our uh Pardon store. Me, our store. So yeah, those things have pretty good battery life. I gotta say. Yeah, no, I, I, I honestly feel like I could drive one all the way home. Pretty close, at and least. probably get at least part of the way back. Yeah, I mean, I, don't know. I mean, that's about six. Not miles putting around three to... pe- Not putting three people on it. Well, no, they each had one. one. Yeah. Oh, they each. Okay. They each had one. Yeah, we had. Yeah, we had three carts missing that night, and um, I, I don't remember what ended up happening, but somebody ended up. Uh, I think it was Justin at the time, our store manager. He ended up having to go down there with his truck and get him. Yeah. Yeah. God, it's a fucking. People uh, are just shitty and hilarious at the same time. All right. So <laughs> this actually happened around five years ago, just for full um, disclosure. And it's actually. Uh, it's actually a Florida man story, but mm-hmm. it's one of those ones that's so good we had to read it. A Florida man wear, wears fuck the police shirt to court and wins his case. Um, Michael Burns is ticketed by the Broward County Sheriff's Office for having his license plate obstructed. Uh, however, Burns claims he was given the ticket by the same copy we had encountered with earlier that night. He wrote that he was recording cops kicking people from the side of the highway when he was asked by an officer to leave. It was public property, and I was told they were only being kicked out to ruin their fun by the first officer I contacted. After leaving, Burns' his deputy followed him in his car and eventually pulled him over. I was pulled over by the same officer that had kicked me off public property filming, he wrote. Six other cars pulled up surrounding my car during the stop. Burns said the deputy had said the FOP badge on my plate was obstructing. I refused to answer any of his questions and advised him I would see him in court to fight it when he told me I had to take it off. Hmm. Indeed, Burns did fight it in court, wearing the inflammatory comment on his back. Still, he won the case in front of a judge after a short hearing. So this dude wore a fuck the police shirt <clears throat> and took and won in his yeah. court uh, case, which I is mean, always hilarious. When you know you're right, I wouldn't do something like that if it were uh, any like uh, anything else. Like if the cops said you were speeding or something like that. Right. Because then the judge probably just going to hand you down the fucking ticket mm-hmm. because you're an asshole wearing a fucked police shirt into court. Yeah. But uh, or at least that's the way he's going to see it. Um. But yeah, when you're in the right. Fuck yep. it. Fuck, fuck it. it. Go pick. You know. Um. All right. So that's all the news is stupid that's for funny. this week. Uh, at least that anything that we care to talk about, I suppose. So let's move on. I'm sure there's more news stupid. I mean. Yeah, like I said, we're we're in that we're in that uh, that that weird transition um, where news is not news anymore. It's outrage, it's feelings, and it's stupidity, right? Yeah, because our White House is all three. So I mean, it's just it's not even just the White House. That's just one byproduct of it. It's everything. Yep. Um, I mean. The moment we went from news having to be news to news having to get ratings, it's like... Oh, yeah. Well, that's... Yeah, that's been years. Years gone by. It's just lately, it's, like, been way more... It had always been something people talked about of, uh, well, you can't trust the news. And, right. And at some point, that becomes conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat-wearing levels. Right, but right. There was a, there was also a level of truth to it for a long time mm-hmm. and then you know it kind of all got exposed yep i and, uh there's that movie i can't remember the uh the title of it where they the guys find out and and researching or they're investigating the um catholic church right and it's this big news story that like no one wanted to publish mm-hmm. because of course no one wants to touch that yeah no so that I mean, whole movie's about them trying to get the story out there and blah 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 and i can't i think of the, the boston one of the boston newspapers was the first one to put it out or something right and then you know it, it, it hit national news and all that that's the kind of thing that's like that's what i grew up thinking a reporter was yeah mostly like I, and i mean you got things like lois lane in um yeah yeah in superman right. and you had um uh what's her name from ninja turtles uh, um, April. April. Yeah. yeah April O'Neil and uh, different characters who, like, that's what I thought, like, like news hounds were. They'd go out and then, and then you watch, you know, television and the, the, I thought that's what those reporters were. And they just, all they do is sit there and read. Mm hmm. Like, for the most part, I guess uh, some of them go out and actually do research and stuff. But right, right. Yeah. Of course. Of course. But, you know, whatever. It's a lot changed. It, most of the time, they're looking for a story to catch. You know, catch people clickbait. and clickbait. Yeah. yeah. Now, more than ever, clickbait is like the worst thing ever. 
like earlier, we I was looking through and I saw a story of uh, somebody who had uh, 26 kids uh, found behind a um, a false a wall false wall in their daycare in their center. daycare center, which sounds horrific. Yeah, uh, wasn't actually that horrific. The daycare center was just housing more kids than they're legally allowed to. They weren't like kidnapping 26 <laughs> kids and having the people under the stairs or anything. Yeah, no, that, I mean, like, that's awful for me to yeah. laugh at, but it's hilarious it's when hilarious. you sit there and think about it. It's like, oh, um, okay, that's weird, but all right. Yeah. It's like um, they, they were in a, like, the finished basement, which growing up in a home with a not finished basement in Michigan, I know how literally horrifying those can be. So I'm glad that the kids weren't in an unfinished basement. Yeah, no. Uh, I, they had two caretakers. Nobody was brought up on charges. The, 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 at first, the caretakers were arrested, but then released uh, pending all investigations. And they'll, right, of course, right, get of in course, trouble for course. taking more kids in than they should. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's, right? They're like, there's, there's, like, okay, what are you guys? It's doing? not like there were kids chained to a radiator. <laughs> Whoa, rough! I got dark quick. Hey, well, um, shouldn't happen. Yeah, no, that's life, man. Uh, speaking of clickbait, um, a quote a friend of mine once gave is: uh, "People who are really good looking but have terrible personalities are like real life clickbait." <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. So it's like, huh? Yeah, perfect. Um, so if you guys haven't seen, like we're all in, obviously we're all in the movies. We're into superhero movies and comic book movies specifically. Um, Dwayne Johnson is going to be playing notice. Black Adam and, uh, he has a 2021 Christmas release date for, Finally. for it. Uh, December 22nd, 2021, we'll be getting the rocks Black Adam. I think that means, and I probably should pull it up to say for sure if you want to. I believe that means Warner Brothers is releasing two movies that year. Because I want to say Wonder Woman was 2021. I mean, it's very possible. But I, Wonder I, Woman 2 there were, might be, like, that's earlier in a year. So Oh, yeah. which But they've they've kind of stayed with, like, one movie a year because they don't haven't had as many, obviously. Yeah, no. It's uh, Wonder Woman's coming out, actually, this, uh, this upcoming 2020. year. 2020. Yeah, 2020. Okay. Yeah, June 5th, 2020. That's right. Because Flash died again. Um the Batman is coming 2022, I think. Mm. But yeah, they're no. still pulling cast on the Batman. Right. The Flash has lost lost its another director. I think gained another one. Um, and I mean, what they what, don't have what exactly else. is going on with the Flash? Like, did they fire the last director because he wanted to do a porn parody? I, I don't can't understand. Even At know, this like, point, it's like it's hard to even follow because it's it's not even like the last time it happened. Right. It wasn't even like it's normally pretty big movie news. Right. Like you'd see it like like a top post on Reddit, or it would be uh, like different news uh, like movie places would put put that out there that front front page. This was like teeny little sub story. Oh, by the way, the Flash lost its director again. <laughs> It's like the or it time. gained a new director, yeah, because they just it, it's like it's like a Star Wars movie losing a director. It's yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's like oh, of course it did. Mm -hmm. Like no shit. Yeah, like like we expected that to happen. It, yeah, it was you, going to something. Something is wrong with their the 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 people in charge of that either they're choosing the wrong people at first. Or they're getting into uh, they're they're not explaining to these directors what they want. Right. Well, good enough or something. Something's wrong. I, there. Something I mean, really losing people really that, stupid. Yeah. Uh, um. That often. But in any case, yeah, it's it's I'm uh, that the Flash movie was what I looked forward to sort of because I liked the Flash. It was he was one of the only few good things about Justice League. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, now I just don't give a shit. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like we all wanted the Flash from the T. At least personally, I wanted the TV show Flash, and I only watched two seasons. Right, But right. he was great. Right. And then, they, you know, they went with the other Zachary Levi, I think, or whatever the other guy's name is. I can't even remember now. Yeah. I, I don't think it's that's him. Um, they went with this other guy who was good in, in Justice League, and then I have seen nothing. From, yeah, no. Like, it's, nothing yeah. interests me since then. Uh, you're thinking of Ezra Miller. Yeah, Ezra Miller. That's yep. it. Who I think played a wonderfully appropriate Flash. Yeah, he was. He was. He was the big. He was awkward o goof. exactly an yeah. awkward nerdy kid or guy, young guy, who you know got abilities that he couldn't understand. Yeah, I mean, I I finally started watching 
Aquaman, and now I have not finished it. I got halfway through the movie. The movie is good. I'm not saying it's long. It, 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 Aquaman it, was a long one. Um, but I got halfway through the movie. I I, I stopped watching at the point where he's um, fighting. And I guess mild spoilers if mm-hmm. you haven't seen it yet, where he's fighting because um, I haven't seen it yet, yeah. so it's perfectly you know eligible. Where he's fighting uh, the 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 guy that's going for the crown of the set, the Ocean Master. Um, oh God, yeah, that's not even halfway through. That's about halfway through. Is it? Yep. Jesus Christ, that yep. movie fits in a lot of plot in the back half. I mean, if you're sitting there looking at it, like like I I, I was watching it on HBO. So it's it still sitting there waiting for me to finish it, and yeah. the bar was halfway. It doesn't feel like halfway. Let me right, put yeah. it that way, because that's like he just gets to Atlantis and is like, oh, oh fine, all right, fine, I'll be king. I'll, I'll do this. Yeah, he gets to Atlantis. And then gets his ass kicked. He gets... He, he, he gets uh, Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, he gets captured by the Popo while having a secret meeting. Yeah. Um, Gets his ass kicked, then goes to the arena to fight his brother for the title yeah, of the, the king of Atlantis. Again. Yeah. Gets his ass kicked again. Yeah. But, um, but just Jason Momoa, that little white dude's not going to kick Jason <laughs> Momoa's ass, right? But it's sea people. Yeah, no. You know, like, I don't it's give funny. a shit. It's like, not, it's not like a total ass beating. He does a, he does all right. Oh, yeah, no, he but, does fine. But yeah, he, he ends up get losing, basically. Yeah, he loses the fight. But, um, I'm, I'm sitting there and, like, I, I'm not saying the movie's boring because the movie is interesting. It's engaging. I think at the time, my desire to play Destiny was overwhelmed. It. So halfway through, I'm like, you know what? This movie is good, but I'm going to go play Destiny. Yeah. It's, but uh, uh, I I did end up sitting down and watching it. Um, the like the what I've seen is enjoyable. It's a very big boom bang movie, right? And Which, that's again, uh, DC just can't win because Jason Momoa has been doing so much other shit that they can't get Aquaman two off the ground. Right. I mean, it's just it's, it's what I wanted. Yeah. It's one that I want. Yeah, Jason Momoa is an awesome dude, and yeah. he deserves a bunch of success. So uh, that's awesome. I'm kind of I. <clears throat> I don't know why the, with all these other issues and maybe they have, um, mm-hmm. you've got the black Adam movie, which, uh, I don't know if Shazam is going to be in it. Cause I mentioned before, like I, when I saw Shazam, I, I enjoyed that movie too. All right. I still haven't sat down and watched that either, but that's on the up and up of, um, DC films. It's way, way lighter than even, um, like wonder woman or any of the others. Right. Even Aquaman. The Aquaman is pretty much just like, uh, Michael Bay action right. all the time with with, with goofy quips thrown yes. in. So like they they've got they they started copying more Marvel. It is a, it's a way it's a it's a uh, like an entertaining version of Venom. Right. Uh, yeah. There's big oh, big Mick large just big things happening all the time. Explosions. The CGI no... is actually not half bad either. No. Yeah. It's like like good. I'm sitting there watching it. Like you can tell when it's CGI'd. But it's not like that the uncanny underwater. valley. It's not like the the oh that looks so cheap. Like they hired a bunch of college interns and who are in Blender one hundred and one, just now <laughs> learning how to do three D models type shit. The underwater effects are actually really good. In that yeah, movie. no, like um, they with the ending, <clears throat> like the giant. There's a giant like fucking Lord of the Rings esque battle. Right, that's crazy with like dolphin people, <laughs> crab people. Um, fish people, it's it's insane and right. it's crazy and it's like I have no idea what's a, it's it's more trackable than like a Transformers movie, right? Because it's like a Lord of the Rings battle. I mean, yeah, you look at Transformers movies, you can't like, keep track of the action at all. Like I love, I, 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 now that we're on this topic, I gotta say I love how Transformers is like ninety percent CGI and yet there are still jump cuts. Yes. Like, how do you... You can't track the action How whatsoever. do you have jump cuts? There's jump cuts. How do you have jump cuts? In, Just in, show in, me in, the robot punching the other robot. Right. Like, like but how do you have shot cu- short... Oh, fuck. Jump cuts in a scene, in a, in a movie, where you have complete control yeah. over what's going on on the screen? I don't understand that, you know? Like, like Leslie... Or when, when they do it in Taken 3. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Fucking what's his name is like 75 Liam years Neeson, old. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson is 75 years old. He's yeah. not actually 75 years old, but he's old, right? He can't jump a fence as easily as he could when he was 30, yeah. right? So I get that you need some jump cuts to get that to look 78 just jump cuts. Yes, 78 jump cuts. But it's like, I get that you're jump cutting there to make it seem more dramatic than it really is because all he is is jumping a fucking fence. It's not that special a Sorry, sequence. Yeah. But it's like, 
But you in in the Transformers movie, there is no excuse for jump cuts. You have complete you control. You can show every bit of that action, all of the the fighting. You could see <clears> every scene, but they don't, and that's that's why I hate those. Yeah, movies. like like if you're the gonna Venom see a punch flying, you're thing. gonna see a punch flying. Like from from Optimus Prime to something, and right before it connects, you cut away to fucking Sam Witwicky jerking off on like a toaster. Or why are you doing that? Or you see where fucking Optimus Prime is fighting two Decepticons and is like beating a Decepticon with another Decepticon. It starts looking awesome. He's fucking dragging a fucking robot across the ground, about to slap another robot in the face, and then it cuts off to yeah, a fucking human person running down a street going. <laughs> No, fuck you. Fuck and then you, you can see it in the suck. background happening, but it's like all out of focus because field of focus, depth of exactly. focus, depth of field. That's how it works. So you're like, you don't actually get to see the connect, like the hit connect. Or so you don't it's get to just see Optimus shiny Prime. CGI smashing into right. each other. You don't get to see Optimus Prime beat a motherfucker with another motherfucker. And yeah. that is unfair. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, just do the whole fight. They take a fucking fuck you, John Michael Wick Bay. fight and do it. In CGI with robots. Yes. That's what I want. But yes. in any case, yeah, the, the the final fight is awesome and big and massive. Uh, but Black Adam, I don't – I'm still mad that they don't have – like, I don't know. Maybe Shazam is going to be in the Black Adam movie. Right. But I'm thinking this is going to be uh, a prequel. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. I, I, mean, just, I don't, I don't I know. Want, I want the Shazam sequel where Shazam and Black Adam are actually going to fight. And fingers crossed, Henry Cavill shows up as Superman because that would also be really fucking awesome. That's like the trio of Mary Sue's right there, right? It really, really is. Yeah, There's like, a great – it's one of the great animated DC movies is uh, Shazam's movie. And fucking Billy Batson is like this homeless kid who gets the powers and everything. And then Black Adam is um, is like Terrorizing in the City and Superman shows up yeah. and is – fighting and helping him out and it's just there's so many good moments in that that animated movie it's it's See, fucking great that's one thing dc does do well though their animated shit's usually top yeah. notch usually usually i need to see the they just released a wonder woman uh animated movie i haven't really? seen it yet. Yeah. i it was the villain is like this chick with wings that i've never ever heard of oh, like okay archangel or something. i don't remember what she's called but i have no idea who the villain was you, and you say you say archangel i think of the x-men character. i do too yeah, yeah you know like but um <laughs> Uh, but I'm I'm still gonna check it out because again DC animated is usually top fucking right notch. yeah and uh, usually yeah, no, I, I just I, mean, I want to see joke, Black Adam and Shazam punch the shit out of each other. The Killing Joke was not great. The Killing Joke you had to skip the first half. Yeah, because they ruined the Killing Joke with the first half. Yeah, they decided to do some really just no. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see Batman and Batgirl making out. It's, yeah, it's it's weird. It's weird and creepy. Right. It's fucking weird and creepy. It doesn't need to happen. Yep. No. Yep, stop yep, yep. it. Don't do it no stop more. Stop it. Don't do it. Bad. Bad. But the second, when you skip, and all that is new, the Killing Joke comic did not have any of that bullshit. Right. When it gets to the actual part, the Killing Joke stuff, it's it's fantastic. It's the right. Killing Joke in uh, animated. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, I want to see super, I want to see two fucking Superman level powered people Punch Boy, each other just, in the face. Yes. And it'd be cool because the fucking one good thing about the um, the Superman movie yes. was the Zod fight. Yeah. And this, the fights in general. The other fights were awesome too when he fights the chick and the big dude. Right. Those were cool. Right. And it was just all the other stuff. Uh, yeah. I sucked. mean, looking back at Man of Steel, like I know I went and saw that movie. I can't remember seeing it, yeah. but I know I did because I went with two friends of ours. So I know I watched the movie. Mm -hmm. It was It was fun. It was awesome. Except it wasn't because it was mediocre it's, and bland. It's, it's but depressing Superman, which Superman should never be depressing. But the fights were cool as shit. Yeah, like when he punch or when, like when he gets punched through a fucking building and just flies through this building mm -hmm. and just going through this office and the shit's like falling down. It's like yes, yeah, it was awesome. It, That's what you need in in those movies. It's just dumb adrenaline pumping shit like that. Yeah, you need some big huge fights, and I, I still feel that. <laughs> Batman v Superman made me look at that movie with a, a better, like a, a more. I still haven't sat down and watched that better. movie. Like I, I feel like I know I, I feel like I need to. I, I kind of want to see the Snyder cut, but not really because it's like three hours long and. Yeah, Zack Snyder can't craft story very well. He's he's really really great at visuals. Yeah, amazing yeah, at no, visuals. I mean, he, he, it's just I think I the like editing he, process kills what he. 
creates. I, I feel like what he he should Jason, be. Uh, go ahead. He, he should be like the guy you hire to film the movie, but you should hire somebody else to make sure it follows the story that you've to, written. Yeah, yeah. Keep a, keep a cohesive story. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, like like I I feel like he does uh, amazing action scenes. It's like right, it's yeah. one of the reasons Three Hundred is still such a great movie, right? Right. Yeah. This plot is paper thin. It's just we have dudes who are gonna go and fight other dudes. That's all and you they're, need. They're fucking shirtless and wa- and like uh, oiled up apps. That's and, the and most important part. And they're badasses. And then like the other fighting. badasses. Yeah. And then the fighting is like the rest of the movie is yes. awesome action scenes. Yes. Visually stunning. Um, it's like it's and, and like there's a scene in Batman v Superman where Batman it's straight out of the um uh, Batman Returns comic uh-huh. where he posts up and I was mad about the scene the visual being in it because this is not. Batman Returns, like right? The yeah, comics. Batman Returns. It's a wannabe, really crappy version of it where Batman and Superman have never met before, and then right, Martha. Yeah. But they have that scene where Batman is posted on the side of the building. It's dark, but like the light is behind him, so he's all shadowed. And it, and it was just seeing that in the movie was like, oh, comics alive, and that was great. And then the rest <laughs> of it was fucking shit. But that's that's this kind of shit that Zack Snyder is good at. That like, oh my god, scene or the fucking fight at the end of Justice League between um, <laughs> oh man, yes, fucking whatever that asshole's name was, Beowulf. Oh, or oh no, it wasn't shit. Beowulf. Oh my god, <laughs> Grendel and Superman. <laughs> I believe in justice. Oh, now I'm going to have to look that <laughs> up, man. And punches him in the fucking face. Who gives a shit about that character's name? I do. Fuck you. Uh, uh, but, um, oh yeah, my God. I, I, so, I don't know. I I want to see Shazam and Black Adam go at it. I want to, like, I don't know. I like Billy Batson was kind of, um, Shazam was endearing because he was like, this. he's, he's a kid with these incredible powers. Yeah. And Black Adam is like a, I I want to say he Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. God. And his army of parademons. Uh, Black Adam is like a, so kind of Egyptian god king. He's complete. He's got like a god complex. Right. Right. He's uh, utterly. I want to. I can't wait to see the Rock play a villain too. Play someone who's just like the Rock character from the wwe is completely self or wwf back in the day yeah. completely self-absorbed narcissistic i am the best of the, i am the shit uh he had that actor swagger like with like stereotypical back in the day yeah i like, i cannot wait to see him play black adam i fucking i want it so bad yeah no um just a year away i mean black two adam years two, no, years away. Away. Well, two years away two years away a year and a few months no, yeah, well, it was, it's close enough that we can say two years away. When is it? Is December it December? 22nd. Oh, okay, then yeah, totally. Yeah. It's two years away. Yeah, Never no, mind. it's it's, it's close I'm, enough. I'm like in my head, I'm thinking, nope, it's early 2021. I can like, see it soon. Yeah, Shut no, up, Joe. No, don't I'm, bring reality into this. No, reality time. will always win. <laughs> it's more than two years away. Better, <laughs> better to disappoint you now than later. Yeah, that's true. So that way. When you remember and you get disappointed again, it's not as serious. <laughs> keep your expectations low like exactly. with this year's Star Wars. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I I don't know. I, I like I don't hate Star Wars anymore. Like I I've, I've gotten to a point where I've gotten over that, right? But I still I just kind I, of like, ignore it. I, I got to be perfectly honest with you, and this yeah. is this is one of those things where it's like. You're fucking. You're a fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I straight up did, for a while, just hate the entirety of Star Wars because of Episode Eight. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> now that it's been a little while and I've had some time to cool off, I don't hate Star Wars at all. I still love Star Wars. Yeah. Well, it's the I, kind I, of thing I, I don't care for like the prequels, right? Yeah. Like they're, they're they're still their own thing. They're still there. They're like, okay, I can appreciate you on some level. The original three movies are still fantastic. Uh, they still hold up pretty well, despite being 40-something years yeah, old now. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't hate them. I, I still love them. I still love, uh, you know, I, I still enjoy The Force Awakens, despite the fact that it's just jerk me off fan service. Um, but when, then I get to episode eight. I, I, I still like Rogue One. Rogue One was still enjoyable. Depressing as hell, but enjoyable. I have not. I've not sat down and seen Solo, but I've heard it's actually better than its performance would imply. Mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> and so, but I, but episode eight, episode eight is now in its own container for me. I disregard it as canon. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but I completely. We're gonna see what happens with this next movie. I can I think so does ha- J. J. Abrams. <laughs> I can. <laughs> I have to completely disregard it as canon because there were so many dumbass plot choices made in this movie yeah. that it just doesn't fit in with any of the other seven movies. It's just... I think one big <clears throat> problem around that movie was they they were like, Star Wars is back and everyone was happy and, uh, you know, we want Star Wars. And then they're like, you want Star Wars? Here's Star Wars. And then they shot five movies at us in just a few years. Yeah, so you had uh, the fucking Rogue One. You had Solo. You had those in those full four movies at us, right in a short time frame. That and then the last one was so utterly bad that it left a terrible taste in a lot of people's mouths. Yeah, like for me, it didn't ru- it, it didn't like ruin the, the prequels or, or the I mean the original story. Uh, the original movies, like the prequels, I, I'm not a fan of, but like I accept them. Like, right, yeah. yeah. No, like I said, they're there. there are things to I, like I respect them, them for like, what they were, what they had tried yeah, yeah, to do. Yeah. I you like know, things they're from the, and the Clone Wars animated stuff and all yeah, that. Yeah, no, Clone Wars was a fantastic but show. It was, uh, it was like, it, it left a, like, I didn't want any Star Wars. I didn't want to see Star Wars. I didn't really. So you're talking about basically it fatigued you. Yeah. Yeah, no, I completely Very understand. Quickly. I'm like, I'm on board with that as well. Like, I, I, I'm at that level too. Um, but I was still excited to go watch episode eight and then I sat down and I watched episode eight and it's like, what is this shit? We legitimately, I still, I can't remember a time other than, I mean, I think there's been some psychological movies that have done that to me, Yeah. but I've never, I can't remember a time where I saw a movie and then with two other people, mind you, having the same experience where we sat down after that movie and just kind of like you, it was like. I don't understand what I just saw. Yeah, yeah. Because my, my, you know, the love of Star Wars, and even with the prequels, I didn't feel like this. No, no. Like, I remember watching The Phantom Menace. They were just kind of boring. Like, I saw The Phantom Menace in in theaters. Yeah. I went, and this was, this was, that was a big deal back then, because I was like, I don't know, it came out, what, 99? So, I was like, I was like 13 when it came out. I still remember seeing it in theaters. I I remember, I saw that, it was one of the very first movies I ever saw in a theater, so I, I I remember being so excited for it, like, oh man, this is so fucking cool, because it was a really good movie compared yeah. to the following two anyway and um i'm right. like i mean compared to the following two it was great i mean there was there was a lot of jar jar binks in that movie and you know talking I mean, about trade regulations and yeah but i mean it was none still, of them were great that one was the best of the three that's what i'm saying yeah. basically um it, it was still very star warsy though right like there was still it was it felt yeah like, it felt more Star Wars than Episode Eight did. I think because we could watch that movie and be like, okay, I mean, you know, we'll, they'll, they still got two more. We'll see where this goes. And Not then, to mention that, you know. It, we had set. no idea how bad the the CGI usage was going to be yeah. that, that Lucas did. But, but yeah, um, that but, was still, it was, I loved it when I saw it in theaters, too. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. So I like, and I went back, and it was one of those movies that when they re-released it in 3D, I went and saw it again, because fuck yeah, why not? And it wasn't spectacular, but that was when that that was the moment I realized this movie's not good. Yeah. But um, you know, it was like, yeah, no, this this movie's fine. So it's like, uh, but did, but then you get to episode eight, and it's like, who greenlit this? Who thought this was a good idea? Subverting you know? your expectations. Subverting my expectations, subverting, like you know, shit on that's fine. I'm completely fine with you subverting my expectations, right? Like if I go into a movie. Although with a franchise like this, I should get what I expect, no matter what, right? But anyway, I, I get that. Like I I, can, I I like it when you can flip that the script on me. That is used as an excuse, right? I like is, it when you flip what the it script is. You're on not, me. That's not actually subverting expectations. I know that. Yeah, well, I mean, it is. That's the problem because you go in expecting a Star Wars I movie, expect a good and what movie you get is a trash. pile of shit on a plate, <laughs> uh, like a gold plate yeah. with you know what? But like. So, like, I went in and it was, like, fine. But I think the point I'm getting at is I think we went and saw The Force Awakens a second time, right? Did we go and see – or – I don't remember if we saw it a second time. I what, think I what, did. what I got to say yes. is – Yeah, we yeah went. I definitely went and saw it a second I'm time. I'm pretty sure I went, I went to. But mm-hmm. um, what, what I'm getting at is The Force Awakens, while it was, like, a cheap uh, just fan service jerk off, like I mentioned before – um, it's still a movie that I went and saw at least twice. Yeah, and enjoyed. And enjoyed both times, yes. I mean, there, the second time was a little weaker than the first mm-hmm. time. There were more things to point out, more plot holes, whatever. 
Um, but it, it was still fine. It was still fun. It was still enjoyable. Episode eight, I did not want to ever see again. Yeah. After we were done, um, it was just one of those things. It's like, why? Why are you doing this? Yeah, no, I still haven't. Why I, you do this? Which is weird. Why are you like, even watching like a Blu-ray or anything like that? I haven't. I watched uh, Rogue One more right. than once. Yeah, I, I know we definitely saw Rogue One multiple times. Um, I've watched like. Yeah, I mean, uh, when it came just, to Netflix, I, I watched it again. Yeah, when it came solo, to Netflix, I've watched part of a second time. Yeah, uh, and this is just, the eight is literally like you said earlier. It's something where you just write it off, like it was it was a mistake. Yeah, it's like the last it's season a dream of sequence. Game of Thrones. You oh just you, it's the same exact feeling I got watching that, uh, except that was spread out between you know, six episodes. The light, the last season of Game of Thrones was fine. Until you get to the last like two no, episodes, it wasn't. I, I said fine. I didn't say it was good. I didn't, say oh, it, I I didn't even, even say it was good. acceptable. Right? Like it, it was. It was there. It was a thing, and I was still with him. Like I, I still wanted to see where things went. Yeah, it was still bad. It, 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 it was going down. Like the first episode of the season is the best episode of the season, and yeah. then from there it's all downhill from there. But it's like a slow descent, right? Well, like it's like you're climbing down Mount Everest a few feet at a time, and the last episode you just fucking fall. I see it as less a <laughs> slow descent and more of you still had like, and I, I this is the way I see it for yeah. myself especially. Yeah. It, it the first couple episodes I <clears throat> so absolutely fucking excited to see these characters finally get together and meet each other. Right, We're right, going to yeah. see characters that haven't interacted very much or haven't interacted since, like, fucking season two all get together, and, and I'm so hyped for everything that's happened in the show. <clears throat> Episode one, it's it's pretty good. You know, these characters are getting together, and it's like, oh, Tyrion's kind of dumb, but all right, this is this in Sansa. Was, oh, oh she's the smartest person ever? Okay. Um, and, and, then then, to... and then you get to episode two and it and, and then it's going down and like these people are what no, no they're kinda they're kinda dumb. And then yeah. episode three, it's like, wow, that was fucking trash and I can't see anything. And then it's it's legitimately like yeah, it gets they're, it they're does go battle. worse and worse, but not not worse and worse because it's like bad worse and worse because i'm realizing oh they've just rat shitted on all of these characters like Tyrion wasn't Tyrion at all that entire season he no. was just it was it was just all bad to me it's like it and it's, it's like, like you go hired, back um, to it no it was the okay, right it's you, writing yeah well, no no I, here's the point i'm making did you um you've watched avatar the last airbender yeah right? the c the book three when they've all snuck into the fire uh, nation or whatever, and they're all living there covertly. To, oh, and they to watch find... their own play. Yes. yes. It's like, it's like, yes, I get the feel like for me, it's like they hired impersonators. Yes. They hired actors to play the actors playing the characters. And it just goes downhill. It felt like the characters forgot who they were and what their motivations were. Especially and Daenerys, of course. Because oh, I mean, it was yeah. Daenerys was the most, well, I mean, they were all like, you could think, look at, and again, now we're doing reviewing fucking game of Thrones season eight. You look at Jon Snow and he literally says, uh, she's my queen. The entire season, those are the only words he practically says. Yeah. You look at Tyrion. So, like, it goes and from. Tyrion goes from, like. <laughs> it goes from, you know, nothing, Jon Snow, to she's my queen. My queen. My queen. She's my queen. She's my queen. And then everything he says. And then she's like, just fuck me and I won't destroy the city. And he's like, my queen, I love you, but I can't. And then it's like, oh, then she burns down the city. And it's like, what was there a fucking, but like even Tyrion, everything he does is just stupid as fuck. I mean, like for me, no character at all, like is, is what they were. Mm -hmm. Arya is like, the only thing she does that is Arya like is killing the Night King. And that was awful. <laughs> Nobody wanted that. Bran is the most evil son of a bitch ever is just going to let, um, the, the only character who was still good was the dude from, um, I can't ever remember his name. Uh, the one, uh, the adopted brother, quote unquote, um, of the, Oh, uh, salt and sea, the fucking squid people. Rick, Rick. Uh, oh my yeah, God. Reek, um, but Theon? whatever. Theon Greyjoy. Yeah, Theon Greyjoy was the only character who was anything. And, <laughs> He could have told Theon, give it five minutes, we're good. 
Yeah. But no, instead he's like, go, Theon, or whatever the fuck he does. And Theon just goes and charges straight at the goddamn White Walkers and is fucking impaled like a little bitch. And then five seconds later, Arya shows up to save the day. And fucking Brad's just sitting there like, ah, I'm going to be king. I have the best story. Uh, the best story. <laughs> My legs don't work no more. It's like you fucking asshole. Bran the broken. Bran the fucking bitch I, ass. I fucking hated it. Yeah, like, uh, like that is how I felt about episode eight. And going into nine, yeah, I don't yeah. I don't really Yeah, you know what? I I'm I right want to see you. nine because I know JJ Abrams at least is going to give me the Star Wars the the fucking ships and the battles and then I don't give He's a shit give about you the story. Star Wars. He's gonna yeah. give me those that side of Star Wars. Yeah. I'm gonna get at least a fucking decent ship battle where we're not gonna have bombers from fucking World War Two flying at half the speed of a turd falling out of someone's asshole <laughs> towards a ship. We're not going to have only X-Wings and only eight and then a slow speed chase through space when they could just go into light speed and stop in front of them. It's all the dumbest things in the world they did with that movie. I'm not going to have that. I'm going to get I'm going to get massive space battles. I'm going to get people with lightsabers fighting. Yes. I'm going to get some force uses. I know. And even if the story is still shit, I know I'm going to get that. I'm not going to get a planet of fucking evil like weird looking cat camel things yeah and yeah, gambling yeah i'm gonna get some star wars which um, is what we need which that. is exactly what i need which i got a dose of last night because i finally sat down and watched, watched the mandalorian. Disney plus yes. oh my god the mandalorian is so fucking star wars please don't it's spoil amazing. it i'm not gonna spoil anything yeah. um because i haven't had a chance to sit down and watch it yet no it is it is quintessential star wars mm -hmm. watching every bit of it feels like and it's not just like star wars as it's grown now it is fucking first three movies star wars practical effects puppets like i mean and i mean sometimes the puppets don't look great like you it, it you could tell 100 percent that's a fucking puppet <laughs> that's fine because it's star wars and yes. it should be a fucking puppet it should look weird yes. right it's an it alien species it look there's, a little off. there's a moment and they show it in the trailer where he the mandalorian is going to pick up this bounty right and this the the little eyeball thing pokes out of the uh the building and it's like it's like why would anyone invent that technology that's that looks dumb and it's it doesn't what it's like uh, impractical as hell yes but that's the way george lucas invented star wars yes and that's perfect yes exactly that is the way this should be and it is it is great it's before he decided that we don't need backgrounds or sets because we could just do them in cgi no 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 uh. there are sets that are built it is it is beautiful there are creatures <clears throat> even when they they do use cgi sometimes for creatures it's not it's not terrible right right um it's oh man it is so star wars it's it is exactly what i wanted and the mandalorian he he he's he, like the to get character out of someone who doesn't you can't see their face because mandalorians don't take their helmets off right um is it's interesting the way they do it because it's very quiet there's not a lot of talking in this mo in this movie in er, movie Show. in the first two episodes yeah it's uh the first episode's like 39 minutes i think the second's like 35 right so right, it's about right. an hour a little over an hour long you can see it as a movie but man it's ah oh, it's good it's good the, the like mm. I, everybody that you know is going to capitulate to our Disney overlords, getting Disney Plus like myself. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I've already signed this. up for it because yeah. I had to seven bucks a month and all that content. Like, why would I not? I know. Yeah. I was just going through. Like, I wasn't even watching anything. <clears throat> it is entertaining to just scroll through and see what's on that. Yeah, no, I mean, I was sitting there looking like, <laughs> look at all the movies. It's like, look at all the TV and movies I can watch, and I'm not going. That's how I'm going to feel <laughs> about HBO Max when that switch is over, right? Because yeah. HBO Max is bringing in like the entire Warner Brothers catalog yeah, and stuff. Uh, it's like, isn't it AT and T bought or, or is it Warner that brought H bought HBO? I mean, Warner is owned HBO for a while because they um, uh, AT and T they... and Time Warner combined merged yeah, yeah so that's why they're all of their content is all coming yeah yeah so point, hbo yeah. and the best part is is going to remain 16 bucks a month for those of us who have hbo now now so it's Shit, like i need to sign up for now again apparently yeah um, although 16 bucks a month is more than i want to spend on that i actually like for me it's it's all right for me it's worth doing 
you get the um, new stuff though. You yeah. do get the live HBO stuff, which is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, some of it you don't get for a few hours. Some of mm-hmm. it you get almost right away. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a toss up, right? But like for me, it's completely worth it because uh, you know before I was uh, acquiring the stuff and it was a bit of a pain sometimes. Yeah. Um, whereas now I just, I, I fire it up and I go and I'm like, I'm just going to keep HBO. Like, why would I not? Like I, I do watch a fair bit of their shows. A lot of their stuff is really good. Mm-hmm. And now if I keep it, I'm going to get, which there's no different. I think HBO max is probably still going to be 15 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's going to change $16 with tax. Of course, yeah. it's a little different for everybody. Um, but I'm sitting there thinking like, you know, I might, uh, I might just stick with it. And, and keep it and and then you sit there and you realize HBO Max is going to have all of this shit underneath it all of the like the entirety of the Warner Brothers catalog is going to have Sesame Street it's going to have all this yeah. stuff I'm just like oh alright yeah I mean that's pretty good so I'm like yeah I'm completely down for that yeah um, I'm just I, I I dislike the amount of streaming services because we've just given we basically have given them exactly what the cable companies wanted. Right. They wanted to separate all of the channels and charge you more to have you pick and choose with packages and everything. And and we've basically given into that right, right. with streaming. Um which kind of sucks. Um actually it sucks a lot. But and you know, it's it's you know, here we are. Fucking mistakes were made. Hmm. I'm looking at Zer. Like I said, guys, we play a lot of Destiny too, yeah. and uh, Zer just popped into the game about an hour ago. Oh, fucking and, terrible face. Um, and Zer, for those who don't know, Zer is a character in Destiny and Destiny Two who sells really rare items, um, the exotic level items, which are the highest tier and are typically very, very hard to get. Um, he has the same gun this week he had last week. Oh, that's lame. Yeah, he has Risk Runner again. Risk Runner is a uh, an electric based submachine gun, which is amazing because when you get hit with electric based energy while you're using it, you get damage resistance to electric energy, and you start shooting out lightning bolts randomly, and you basically have unlimited ammo while this is activated. Um, and it's just it, you can really melt some things. Um, and then he has a few other things, and I'm just kind of like I'm I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, if this is his final inventory. Because I've, I've already got Risk Runner. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, whatever at this point. He has a few different things, though. Some kind of neat. Mask of the Quiet One is the Titan. Yeah. But, um, anyway, mm-hmm. let's continue going and talking about dumb shit. Um, I don't remember anything else. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know, like... Uh, I, I all I can say at this point is I really hope this next Star Wars flick is not um, complete trash. Yeah, like that's all I can really hope for, you know. And I mean, with it being J.J. Abrams, I feel like it'll probably be fine. You know, I I still hate how they try to turn Star Trek into Star Wars because Trek was never about the action. Trek was never about the mm-hmm. big space battles. It was always about you know, exploration and philosophy and stuff. And I love that kind of, that kind of shit too. Meeting new alien species, making peace with them, diplomatic relations, scientific discovery. So that, I, I think that's why I never really um, got into the new Star Trek films, because like you said, it's subverting my expectations. It's taking something I've known, something I probably know well enough that I could, uh, you know, you know, I don't know, maybe write a story or two that would fit into the Star Trek universe because I've watched so much of it. Mm-hmm. So when you sit there and you sit and you, and you go that route where you're trying to turn it into a big budget action flick with explosions and people dying, it's like, that's not what Star Trek is. That's not what I want. You know, it's not what they were. <clears throat> yeah, it's it, it wasn't it wasn't a big J.J. Abrams event. And I like, I, I like those movies because I wasn't a huge right, Star, yeah. Star Trek person. Right. Um, I didn't see the last one though. I still need to, but there's so many plot holes in those. And those were definitely J.J. Abrams level, like storytelling, like the second Star Trek movie yeah. that he did was dumb as hell. Yeah. They literally, the first one made it so, you didn't need ships anymore because you could teleport across the galaxy. The second one made it so we're now immortal. Everyone is immortal. We yeah. have cured every disease. We have a limitless supply of magic healing blood. 
that can bring people back from the dead. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? But the fight scenes were cool. The ship battles were awesome. The action was cool. They flew in a volcano and it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know, man. I'm just, I never got into them. I don't care. You know? Yeah. No, I don't blame you. I, I can't, I can't blame anyone. Like, and that was, that was kind of the, the theme I got from people that were really into Star Trek and not just like, um, um, next generation, but people right. that watched Star Trek and then all the other iterations, like most of them found the movies to be a, a lot of them found the movies to be pretty drab. Yeah, bad. no, I mean, because you you switch from what Star Star Trek is known for, which is deep intricate plots and storylines and stuff that's grossly engaging, and and it it goes shallow blow everything up and look all the explosions guys boom isn't that cool and it's like um, not really fucking uh the there's a, a youtube channel that's been around for a long time that's fantastic uh called red letter media yeah and they're with when they go into star trek because they're fucking huge star trek nerds like you are like probably bigger than i am probably most yeah most likely I mean, I, they're I, like I, they're like have everything memorized right and, yeah and, like you know. i like if you make a star trek reference and it's in either deep space nine or the next generation i'll pick up on it okay. right away these guys um, are telling I also you like don't episode have... <clears throat> and like minute time that the quote right comes... yeah no i don't yeah, go yeah, that yeah. deep <laughs> plus i don't own any star trek merchandise oh, okay yeah. right like <clears throat> like i just it's not that I don't want Star Trek merchandise. It's that I've spent, I'm so deep in debt I can't buy yes. anything, right? So it's like, eh, yeah. that thing looks really cool. I don't have $2,000 to put a replica that's one 2,000th scale of the Star Trek Enterprise in my, my living room. Yeah. I want to. Fuck, don't, don't get me wrong. If I had the money, <laughs> I would absolutely have it there. Yeah. It's just, you know, yeah. The, yeah, they're huge Star Trek nerds. And them, they, and like, even though I am I don't even, like, have the same base that they do, when they're talking shit about, like, some of the new movies and stuff. And, yeah. like, the new show on um, ABC Access or whatever it was I'm on. I know. Enterprise, is it? No, no. It's After Enterprise. It's After Enterprise. Yeah. It, whatever it is, like, just, oh, my God. They, they, they're, they're brutal and it's hilarious. <laughs> And they're just like, this is Star Trek, right? Is it Star Trek Discovery? Maybe it's Discovery. I don't uh, know. I just know that they're pretty brutal. Yeah, CBS All Access. Uh, they're um, they're brutal about just about every movie uh, they watch. But, I mean, it's one of those really entertaining uh, review type channel or channels. Right, yeah. And, yeah, their Star, Trek, their Star Trek videos are fucking great. Now, I have to be perfectly honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, I very well might get CBS All Access just to watch Star Trek Picard. Um, cause yeah, they were mocking the shit out of that, too. I mean, no, I'm completely do like, fuck, do it. But that doesn't mean it won't be good, right? Maybe. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I am all for. Um, I mean, the fact that it brings back Brett Spinner as, as Data and like, I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm all for. Um, the actor, Sir uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick man. Stewart. I straight but, up, straight up. I will watch anything with him in it. Emoji movie. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. Just go watch the emoji movie. Then. I'm gonna watch the emoji movie. <laughs> doesn't he play like poop number it two? Is the poop emoji? Yeah, like oh uh, fuck that movie. Like seriously but, though, I I will I will. Watch, I like him. I think yeah. he just makes stupid decisions sometimes. No, I think he's amazing. No, no, no. He's gotten to a point where he he can make those decisions. He can just do whatever. It's fine. Exactly. Yeah. No, no. I like, don't fault him for it. Yeah. It's it's he's living like whatever he wants to do. Someone brought him the script and said. Says Sir Patrick Stewart, would you like to play the poop emoji in a movie? And he went, that is hilarious. I will play a turn in the cinema or some shit like that. I'm sure. I and mean, that is I the mean, character. You've seen the American movie. Dad, right? Like, yes. Like oh, he, yeah, he, exactly. He, he plays, plays the, the crazy CIA director. He plays the CIA director, and it's fantastic. And I thought that was insane. somebody doing an impairment. Uh, no, that's the really whole time. him. Like, I whoa. thought it was. That's the beauty. The one thing that is really <laughs> great that Seth MacFarlane can do, get those people like him and Adam West. Yeah. Adam West, the original Batman series works and is hilarious because Adam West has no idea it's a comedy. Yeah. He's 100% 
all in on those that, that TV show. That's when you sit there and you go re- back and watch it. It's yeah. hysterical. That's like that's like when you sit there and you realize, le- like when you find out that Leslie Nielsen didn't know some of the movies he was in were supposed to be comedies. Yes. So he just delivers everything deadpan. And it's like this is perfect. Exactly. Like it's, what it's, is the it, Naked Gun? The original Naked Gun. He thought it was a serious movie. Mm. Turns out it was a comedy. He didn't realize it. He said fuck it and kept going with fucking, the stick. Uh, yeah. And Leslie <clears throat> Nielsen's that's what that's like. What he made was a him serious. Fun. He was a serious actor at but, some point. Like but, a serious dramatic actor. Actor, yeah, and then he moved on to you know do stuff like Airplane and The Naked Gun, and it was perfect. Eventually, he got it. That, like he did get it though. Oh but, yeah, and no. he was still w- amazing at playing that idiot character. Yeah, well, who doesn't understand? I, I don't think it's so much an idiot as is uh, he's oblivious. He's not oblivious. Nece- yeah, he's not okay. necessarily stupid, but he's definitely oblivious. <clears throat> I yeah, mean, there were some dumb decisions both. he does make. Both. Yeah. But, but in, in any case, yeah, I love that Seth MacFarlane was able to do that with uh, um, both of those actors. You know, I, I find it absolutely hilarious, though. Like, the, the best part about the whole American Dad, mm-hmm. Patrick Stewart, like, the character is very obviously Patrick Stewart. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> you know, totally. Like, uh, like Same thing. Adam West plays Adam West. He's yeah. Mayor Adam West in fucking Family Guy. Yeah, it's, it's, like, the, it's one of those only <clears throat> running jokes that's great. Yes. And I, I think it's just absolutely perfect. Like, it yeah. doesn't. Oh, yeah, it yeah. does not get any better. <clears throat> and the, the, he's his non sequitur crazy shit yeah. is funny in yeah. that show. And I'm not a huge fan of American Dad. I'm it's not, not a, my yeah. least liked. Uh, I, I'm not definitely a, the Cleveland show is not watchable. But yeah. American Dad, it's I'm not, I would I couldn't really like say I was a fan. I hate most of the characters and don't find like the kid funny, like yeah. the, the weird like the nerd kid who's constantly trying to either jack off or have sex. I don't find him very entertaining. No, the daughter no. is kind of funny. I, I, uh, I, I, but I, I have to admit, Patrick Stewart's fucking hysterical. Overall, I do not like anything Seth MacFarlane has created. I mean, Family Guy used to be amazing. Um, <laughs> like, like I, I've gotten to a point where he just feels like a douche, and a like I, I have that. Like, I always, I, I'm able to separate. I need to see his show, the Star Wars Star Trek parody. I've heard it's legitimately fucking. I, I have heard it's better than. Yeah, like, better like, than Discovery or whatever. It's actually a Star Trek flip, like yeah. movie, like or a TV show. Like he my got thing Star is Star Trek though, better than the people currently writing Star Trek. Right. My thing is though, it's like like I with him for some reason, and maybe it's because he's in all of his stuff that he creates. Like he does the voice of Brian and a couple other characters on like Family well, Guy. Yeah. So I don't know what it is, but I cannot separate the art from the artist. So, oh. like, like with like Louis C.K. when he had this controversy where he jerked off in front of some chicks and me too. After asking gun. them if he could, yeah, like, like that that whole thing. And I was still yes. able to separate his art from the artist. Like, like yeah. I still enjoyed all of the stand up. His jokes are still funny. I'm still I'm still using some of them because they can be applied in a lot of situations. So I was able to like look past that. I I still kind of like okay, Louis, that's a little bit weird. Don't do that again, you know, because what is wrong with you? But it's like I'm not, and I'm not kink shaming unless you're kink. Fine, you had permission, but it was still like you could have done that better, right? But for me, it's like like with Seth MacFarlane, he he just comes off as such a douche in a lot of his things, and I'm like, I don't like you. And I think after Family Guy got canceled, got put back on the air again, and got canceled, and then that third that third revival, that third re airing. I, I, it felt like it just went away. Well, like like whatever charm yeah. was in the original mo- the original show went away, and then they gave him American Dad, and like <sighs> because he could do no wrong at that point, right? Yeah, it yeah. was like he became. He, he became, became too full of himself. Yeah. He did, he but, did American Dad, the Cleveland show, and American Dad I thought was entertaining at first, and then. Like it once has you its get, moments. once you get the shtick down, it's basically just Family Guy with a conservative oh, all, instead all of those shows are basically family yeah, they're, ba- they're all basically like family guy yeah like like it's it, it, which is like basically the cleveland the show with the, Cle- the cleveland show is uh the family guy but black yeah um and then you force there's nothing nothing worth worth uh, like watching for the cleveland show yeah i mean it's just terrible. I, li- I like cleveland as a character on the family guy like i think he's a great because character. he only shows up for 30 seconds and i mean he's goes, funny period now, like, now 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 yeah and falls out of a bathtub yeah. i really gotta stop taking a bathroom peter, peter shenanigans, shenanigans. 
But it's like, I, I, yeah, I still love that where he fucking rides a giraffe and the giraffe kicks the shit out of his house. Like, what the fuck? Or he flies the a helicopter in it. Like, come on. That's the funny thing is even when, uh, like, seasons I don't like a family guy, like, I, like past season three or something, you watch it and you fucking, it's still funny. You can't help but laugh at a, a lot yeah, of the some jokes. of the things. Yeah, it's like it's one of those shows. that's like I, I get I get why it's still on TV. I get why he was allowed to make three different TV shows, all with the same fucking premises. More like three of the same TV shows with exactly. different paint. So yeah, because it's still funny and it's still going to entertain the masses and make money and get those views. Right. Um. I and he's willing to make fun of himself. Yeah, I mean, I got that fucking, respect. Yeah, completely got that I respect. I can't remember what it was. It was in it was in the Simpsons Family Guy crossover where there's a fucking random cut where they're in a biplane and in the back of the biplane is Bob from Bob's Burgers and his Homer's like, "Who's that guy?" He's like, "Oh, we're bringing him with us. Uh, we're carrying him or something. He's pretty good or some shit like that." <laughs> and then fucking you see Cleveland in a biplane crashing and burning and I think they say oh, what happened to that guy and he's like oh he can't stand on his own or some <laughs> shit it was fucking hysterical yeah yeah it's All like right. okay I get it yeah no I, I just I don't like I'm sure that you know he made Ted and Ted 2 I didn't like Ted I hated both of those movies the funniest part of Ted the fucking there's a, a Flash Gordon like they got the actor who played Flash Gordon and there's a fucking party and Flash Gordon's there and it's just insane and they're all fucking high and drunk yeah I'm like yeah, that was that was funny but most of that movie was just yeah, it's, it's Seth it's, MacFarlane humor yeah which can be sometimes fun sometimes it's great fun. And it thought provoking, and then a lot of times it's just oh, okay, you dick and fart jokes and, and references jokes. you don't understand but still laugh at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Helen Keller songs are still fucking hilarious. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Keller says "Uka Pika Boo." All right, all right. Oh my god. Um, I th- uh, I think I've run out of steam now. So yeah. What do you think? You think you're good? I think we're good. Yeah. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed that, but we're gonna have to wind it down here. Mm. Um, I'm feeling a bit tired i still gotta edit all this shit and put it together for you so uh you know we're gonna go ahead and sign off there oh, yeah. um check us out check on, us out uh, on on the youtubes and the facebooks and twatters and all that good stuff and uh you know we have patreon we have patreon you can throw us money if you want you don't have to yeah you don't have to we this is always be free there's stuff that we do lock behind the paywall but you don't need anything do we yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the behind the, the scenes stuff. I forgot the behind the scenes shit. And occasionally, like, special <laughs> videos that we release for our yeah. patrons only. So, um, which, you know, I, I'd like to bring more of that out into the world. Mm-hmm. And by more of that out into the world, more of that so you have to pay for it. So Yeah, we do more, but we're lazy. Yeah, no, it, it's like we we had a dream broke. one day. We were like, we're going to make this our job. And we have not done anything to, like, actually make oh, that work. Oh, well, that's when I thought po- there weren't 9 billion podcasts out there. And then yeah. I realized, oh, wait, Kevin Smith and Joe Rogan are talking out their ass when they say, yeah, start a podcast. You can yeah. do it. It's all new media, motherfucker. <laughs> like, we are one of, like, 5 million identical podcasts. Oh, my God, you yeah. Know, like, 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 even the, uh, even the uh, D&D-style podcasts and yeah, stuff, yeah. that it was like, damn it. We should have been like four years ago, and then we might have like had a shot at being moderately noticed. Oh well, uh, but that's okay. We got ourselves a little bit of a following. We thank each and every one of you. We yeah, really do. We love have a you fun guys. time doing so, this. Yeah, no, and uh, it's, it's a labor of love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we definitely enjoy it. Um, but anyway, if you guys liked it, you know, give us a buck on Patreon. All the links are are available on our website and uh, under the YouTube video that's that this is going to go up. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. That's it for Luke. Yeah. Uh, for the ungodly geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. See you. Fuck you, yay. <laughs>